Hi and welcome. My name is David Hansen and you are at the Stilt Factory. I've been stilting and making stilts for eight years now. I love stilting. I love promoting stilting. I have a website. It's stiltfactory.com and there you can find adjustable aluminum stilts, wood stilts, and today I'm going to show you how to make a version of the wood stilts I have on my website. So what you want to do first is go to the website, stiltfactory.com, and there I have a shopping list waiting for you of all the materials you'll need to make stilts. So go there, get that shopping list, go get the parts, come on back here, and we're going to make some stilts today. Yes! Here we are on the floor of the stilt factory. Why are we here? Because we're going to measure our leg. Okay, this is what you want to do. You want to keep your shoes on and you want to measure from your shoe to the bottom of your knee. Me, I'm 17 inches. I'm going to give my knee a little bit of space. So once we have that measurement, remember it. You've got a three foot section and you've got a two foot section. Okay, the seven and a half distance right there. So you're overlapping them seven and a half inches. I cut this little bevel here just because I'm tricky that way. What you want to do now is you're going to you're going to drill two holes and the holes I chose are three and three quarters of an inch apart. You're going to take your drill and we're going to go into this. Both holes. It goes all the way through. Okay, and you've essentially just mated these two. Okay, that's excellent. Got our um, three quarter inch piece of five ply plywood. Nine inches, one and a half, and it's basically centered. And you just draw that line up and you're gonna cut these out. You can do this with a jigsaw, you can do it with a handsaw, you can do it with a coping saw, um, any of the tools that you might have at home. Foot plate, triangle. What I'm doing is I'm pushing those through. We've got washers and such to go on later. You're going to center it and you're going to make sure that it is even with this piece of the stilt. You're going to come in here with your hammer and you're just going to tap these and you're just going to make a mark on this piece of plywood. You're going to see the marks. You're going to drill through is we're going to want to glue this together with a pretty good quality glue. Um, I'm using this stuff. We want to put it just in exactly the area that it overlaps. Got a little bit of a moist rag here. Um, move it around. Get a good mate. You definitely are going to depend on these. And we want these glued and bolted take some washers here, put those on there. Our stop nuts, go ahead and put those on. All right, now give them a little bit of snug fit. Make sure that works. And one of the things I like to do because I have a, a nice straight level is I want to put these on here and I want to make sure that I've got a really straight line all the way through, which I do. So now I can tighten these up. Pretty tight, just enough to snug the bolts down into the wood. We want to wipe off the excess glue and I marked the three areas that I needed. I needed one right through the middle of this I needed, and I need one at either end of this. Essentially I've already drilled the one in the middle and so are we going to glue? Of course we're going to glue. Okay, I'm going to put those in there. The first one I like to drill is into the bottom peg of the stilt and get ready for the sound.
Okay, and I'll take the other two screws, put those in my pre-drilled holes. Here's a little bit of a warning. Um, when you put your screw holes in, when you drill them, you don't want to go too close to the edge because what will happen is it will pop out here. So you want to take them in from the edge just enough so that the screw stays buried in that wood. Okay, we want to go ahead and now make the stilts for our leg. So you'll remember earlier that my measurement was 17 inches. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to measure 17 inches from what was the ground, which is now our foot plate, up to the top. And we're going to cut that off even at 17 inches. The holes that we're going to put in here, they you measure three quarters of an inch down. You put a quarter inch hole in. You measure from the center of that down to two and a quarter inches. So you've got two holes. If you don't have the heat gun, here's what I recommend. You'll go ahead and drill the first hole and the calf plate will be even with the top. And what you'll want to do here is just, if you can see this, you go ahead and slightly turn that to give the angle of your leg and then drill all the way through so that when you put your bolt through out the other side put your washers on you've got your length of two inch um, nylon webbing which is essentially a seatbelt you're going to go ahead and you're going to put a D-ring. You could get a metal D-ring, you could get plastic D-ring. I, I have bags of hundreds of D-rings around. So what I've done is just at one end, I go ahead and put the D-ring in. Pretty easy. I measure uh, five inches from this part of the D-ring to here. And I put the section of... This is called loop Velcro in there. Um, and I sewed that really well. So you want to go all the way around the edges, back and forth. It's going to take a lot of uh, beating. And then towards on the other side, you're going to take the hook Velcro. And this is just enough to give you a little thumb grab. So start down from there. I'd say about an inch and a half and go ahead and Sew that in there, and you basically have, voila, your strap. I'm going to put our strap on, our D-strap, our D-ring with the nylon webbing. I'm going to take the quarter inch drill and we're going to go through the bottom of these and we're going to, like I said, choose a spot that's not going to interfere drastically with our washer. This is our left foot. It's going to be right here. And then this will be the heel area. And they're close, but not too close. So we're going to use a different size washer there. A little bit smaller. We really recommend getting a pair of used shoes. Nice man, your little brother's got a pair of shoes you can take. So um, I think last uh, option is go buy a pair. But remove the insole. Take our clamp. Clamp that on and go backwards to the hole. Just put
put a hole in my shoe is uh, on the list, but it's a uh, panhead screw, um, countersunk, and you put it in the 3 8 inch water washer, and you find the hole you just drilled, and you push it through. Now that the heel's fixed, make sure that that's lined up. Put your hand here. You don't want to put it over the top of the hole. Take the next one. Find our hole. Go ahead and stick the screwdriver in there. Those are bolted down. We go ahead and we want to put the insert back in there. There it is. The shoe is fixed in. It's the left one. The toes are out over it. We're going to put these back on and we're going to shape them with the heat gun. If Without a heat gun what you do is you cut it about here so it doesn't round the corner and you've got a perfect shape that's going to fit around the front of your shin. I just happen to have the heat gun and I'm using the heat gun. The reason I choose PVC is that it's a closed cell plastic and when you reshape it, it's not weakened. If you were to use an ABS, which is a black plastic, that's open cell. This is a more stable substance to use than black pipe. So. I would recommend using this stuff. Here we go. Take your seatbelt strap and put it around the freshly heated piece of PVC. Clamp it down tight and just wait for it to cool down. All right, final detail. Made two marks an inch and a half apart because that's the width of this. First we put the clamp on, then we put this on. Remember, you can double this up if you want a lot of cushion, which is can be pretty sweet if you do a lot of cement walking and let's face it, what routes, what parade routes and places aren't just all cement. So yeah, I'd go ahead and double it up. Okay, so we're tight here. Gorilla tape. Yes, I am endorsing Gorilla tape. It's awesome. This could last, God, um, 50 hours of stilting. Maybe more, I don't know. I never, I never have keeping track, but it, it lasts quite a long time. Basically, you just want to come up, come all the way around to the wood. We did it! We have a pair of three foot wood stilts that I helped you make by your own hands. If you followed everything, they're gonna be durable and strong and last for years. But the biggest adventure is yet to come, which is, you know, is going to be to get up on these. So I've already also produced a video that's on my website, stiltfactory.com, that shows you some good basic practices of how to get up on stilts, how to stay up on stilts, how, what to look out for, and most importantly, how to get down with a smile still on your face. So look for that video at stiltfactory.com, and it's been my pleasure being here offering this to you. Hope you have a great day.